right. Welcome, everybody. Uh, episode two of The Paint Nerds. Dose, dose. Yeah. God, I, I hate saying that because I literally just said 22, which is like you know, pistol, rifle. Yeah. So, we're way too thug to be nerds. <laughs> yeah. Strike yeah. that, reverse it. Yeah. <laughs> way too nerds to be thug. Uh, today's episode is literally about uh, the different types of paint, the different things you can get with them. And uh, so I'm going to start. And I mean, I know there's quite a few different paints, but uh, oh, <laughs> yeah, almost forgot. We we're going to start with this first. Uh, we all did the Walmart challenge. So I'm gonna I'm gonna show off mine. Go for it. I did two. I did uh, I did one as the Walmart challenge, and I did another one with my paints and washes and you know my little details. So this is my Walmart challenge. It's got you know a little bit of blending in there to break up the pattern, you know, because reptiles, you know, you when they're when you you know reptiles in the wild, and we're assuming with dinosaurs that. You know, their all their colors were designed to actually break up their pattern and break up, you know, any contrast they have to nature. And so, like the royal ball python has a lot of golds, and but it has these little black skulls that break up its pattern, so it can actually hide a little better. Because predatory eyes apparently can't see that breakup in pattern. Yeah, correct. And that was the Walmart challenge with me, you know, mixing and trying to get everything, you know. Looking somewhat, I'm gonna say very somewhat, uh, just as, as as blended and nice and simple as possible. Mm -hmm. I, I I I'm one of those people that I'm used to, uh, that, and that's why I love this challenge. This is great because I'm used to using like flow improver and matte medium and gloss medium and you know inks and stuff like that to kind of change the temperature of my paints. Right. So I I, can, you know, I don't just get brown. I can get a, a muddy brown. I can get you know these stark yellows. You know, mm -hmm. and it, it it really brought me back to the roots of painting. Yeah. So to recap, the Walmart challenge was take a little toy from Walmart and paint it using only Walmart paints. And we took it a step further. You could only use black, white, yellow, blue, Ooh, and red. Yeah. So you had primary colors. literally primary colors to work with. Yeah, and uh, I must say this right now that as fun as it was, it's one of those things where you'll know the real painters when you see them. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, if you go to the Facebook page and you do this and you pop it up there, it will display it for everybody oh, yeah, to see. I mean, it's, we're all about that. You know, uh, we're, we're more transparent than the government. <laughs> And we won't storm a Capitol building. <laughs> yeah. uh, that's, a, that's a different rant for a different podcast. <laughs> I'm sorry, but that was just too funny to pass up. Uh, the secret order of the water buffalo from the Flintstones has really taken a turn. It, it has. <laughs> it has. You know, I, I was looking for, you know, I was looking for a silver lining in that. But anyway, we digress. Yeah. So uh, what I did with my, you know, paints that I normally use, I kind of got that. You got a natural breakup of colors. You've got, you know, the slightly off. I don't mind the green feet. That's where I was going to be gluing them to a base. But you have the contrasting colors in there to kind of show where grime would get into the folds of the skin on the belly and an actual tint to the belly. And I, I, I like the way they both came out. That came out really well. Oh, I mean, all, both of they them both, did. They both did. You know, because I, I, it's been since, like, elementary school and kindergarten, you know, that I've actually used just primary yeah. colors to mix things. Yeah, it's kind of got back to the roots, mm -hmm. you know. Um, he forgot his. My, yeah, I was parenting all morning. Because <laughs> parenting. We're going to use if that. I, if I bounce out of the camera periodically, it's uh, my toddler running around the store. And I'm trying to keep him from pulling stuff down. <laughs> Which we don't mind. And since I have a bad habit of just turning my can around. And I don't, I'm, I'm literally, I'm actively going, oh my god, am I displaying a product? Oh, yeah, good call. Good yeah. call. Because <laughs> tape. This, uh, name, this generic, uh, liquid caffeine derivative. Yeah. 
This caffeine suspension with a hint of citrus. I mean, it doesn't really matter what we do. I'm pretty sure everybody's going to figure it out anyway. Yeah. Um, but when it comes to paint, there's a lot of brands out there that, I mean, you're going to find. And a lot of you mini painters who are already in the know, you know, you know of brands like Citadel. You know the brands like Army Painter. You know Tamaya. You know... Uh, What's the model color? Model color, absolutely. Yeah. Tester. <laughs> I mean, I was it, thinking about testers the other day. Like, we should do a model just like the old, the old school, like. Oh, dude! I would just throw some flow improver into the paint itself and put put it through my airbrush. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, it. it I, I'm not even gonna try to, you know, tamper that old, with that crappy enamel paint. Oh man, <laughs> you can never get off your skin. Right. So the first paint that we're gonna talk about today is uh, Citadel. Uh, in the very first episode. I had made a point to note out that they make multiple temperatures of the same color. So you've got three or four whites, you've got four or five reds, and this is just proof in point. This is Mephiston Red by Citadel, okay? It's a great red, it it dries very deep. Uh, This is a base, so it's usually the first color you actually put on your model. This is like... In miniature painting, you go with your primer, and when you're using Citadel paints, they kind of have this system where it's primer, base, layer, edge, shades, and you kind of build up from there. Now, this is another layer paint uh, in a brighter red, and I believe this is uh, Evil Sun Scarlet. This is a really bright red. Yeah, it is. And when it dries, it's very vibrant, and it's very just in-your-face red. I mean, literally the red on this little guy that you saw in the first episode, that's some gloss medium mixed in with Evil Sun Scarlet, and it is just bright. And it's used to... A lot of people tend to use that for, like lighting effects against Mephiston Red because it's just bright enough to be, you know, up here while the Mephiston's sitting here. So you got the grimy red color, which Mephiston's kind of dries a little darker. Yeah. And then you have Mephi- then you have the Evil Sun Scarlet, which you can use for your edge highlights to make it look like it's a red glint. So it's, it's a red material all the way through. Um, and Citadel came out a few years ago with a very liquidy paint that they call contrast paint. Now this is snake bite leather. It's a really thin paint and you use either a really dark primer mm-hmm. or a really light primer. Now if you use a light primer and you use the contrast paint, you just kind of heavy brush it wherever you need it to go, mop up the excess on the edges. And when it finally starts to dry, you have these recessed edges that in here in the valley, it's really dark where the where the pigment settles, but the pigment settles at different stages, going up to the peak in a, like a fold of a cape. Right. So the the top gets lighter, like natural lights hitting it, where the valleys and the descension into it uh, kind of grades in darkness. Uh, I don't mind contrast paints, but I tend to airbrush them. Um, I like them if I'm doing like a really like a flat, a solid color paint job on something. Um, I've got a roper on the 504 mini site um, that I did with uh, snake bite leather actually. It came out really, really cool. Um, when I first got it, it I kind of thought it was like just base plus shade combined, but like Chaz kind of described it really well, how it's just, it, it is that, but it's so much, it can be more because yeah, it, it grades naturally rather than just your normal base coat, then dried, and then shaded. You can you, there's a there's a visible difference between the two. Yeah, there, there really is, and you know, and, and as that goes, then you have your your shades. Now these are things that you add to existing colors to. Add, add the, the recess colors or add a tint 
to an existing color. You, you'll get stuff like Drakenhof Nightshade, which is literally a shade. So you put this on a brush, you go over your model with it, and it'll take, and this will add a really blue hue to anything. And it, it's pretty interesting. And the fact that you can even put it on black and uh, when you turn the model, you'll see hints of blue. So it turns like Abaddon black into kind of a raven black. Yeah, like an iridescent kind of look to it. Mm -hmm. And another shade they have, which is great for almost every model, is Argax Earthshade. This is a brown tone, uh, an earth tone. And it's used for, well, I use it mostly for uh, terrain, mm -hmm. vehicles, and it, it, you, when, you, when you spray it on with a brush, it, you can actually sit there and kind of guide where it's going to go. Yeah. So you can build up uh, kind of this grungy layer that just kind of, it, it makes you feel and it makes your piece look like it's actually, you know, been in the dirt. Um, yeah, it's good for like uh, muddy water effect. Also, yep. that kind of like dried on it. It's kind of perfect for that, really. Yeah. And I'm trying to find my favorite that I use on almost everything, simply because it is my favorite. And I moved a bunch of stuff around, and now I can't find it. <laughs> um, We're live, folks. <laughs> We've got right. a toddler running around. We're looking for paints. Things are happening. Yep. Uh, but it's called Nulin Oil, which is, it's a shade itself, but it's a it's a black shade. Mm -hmm. So, uh, actually, even with a brush and a little bit of isopropyl alcohol, you can get the grimdark without the airbrushing right. of it. But uh, Nulin Oil adds this this black tone, and it really darkens paint. Like, you can paint something Mephiston Red and you hit it with a layer of Nulin oil after it dries and it goes from this you know kind of dull red to this very bright burgundy like yeah. not bright burgundy but it's kind of a dark subdued burgundy just yeah. brings it down uh great effect and then you put and then they also have Nulin oil gloss now keep in mind almost every shade in like argax earth shade and Nulin oil and reichland flesh shade they have a gloss version, which basically just adds shine. Nulin oil gloss is great for machinery, though, because it yeah. looks like oil stains, like, yeah. like oil dripping off of stuff. Uh, so keep in mind when you use these paints, it's, it, Citadel is, is a great paint. They got great color. They got great saturation. Uh, but you'll need things like La Main Medium mm -hmm. if... You know, if you want to maintain a consistent level of color with your paint, um, instead of using water, which actually helps soften the paint, but at the same time, it kind of disperses the pigment a little bit, and it really dulls it down. You have to paint over the same thing over and over and over again to build up those colors. Again, if you're a fan of that, that's fine. Yeah, you can do great effects with it. Oh, absolutely. But uh, for constant, consistent flow, a Lame medium works mm -hmm. wonders. Um, they also have dry paints, which I didn't touch, and I'm surprised I didn't have a bottle here. And they're literally for dry brushing. And a lot of them are really dry and kind of chunky, so you scoops them out with your brush, and you get it on a piece of paper, you mash your brush. Yeah, the first time I got a, a pot of dry brush, I thought it was bad. I thought it had gone bad. Same. I had no idea what I was getting into. It's I was same. like, what the hell? This is like silly putty in here. Yeah, I... I hand of the heavens uh, I was in the same boat because it, it literally looks like paint that has been dried out and then just put in a, into a pot and then mm -hmm. you know hey buy this and I mean it's basically what it is <laughs> yeah uh, it the way they I think the way they originally intended it is you were to use it like a like blush like you were supposed to screw yeah, your brush in there sense. get it off you know and then just go over your pieces and it, it never works out that way like I've dug my brush in there for like Necron compound mm -hmm. and it's like the first, the first brush stroke, no matter how much you get off of the brush, it's gonna be it's heavy. gonna be too much. <laughs> it's gonna be heavy. Um, and then you have paints like Tamiya. Mm -hmm. Tamiya comes in little cylindrical tubes, about yay, you know, and they're really liquid. Their 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 consistency is very liquid. Mm -hmm. it, it it's easy to move across, and I like to call it my puddling paint. 
Tamiya is great for. I, I find that Tamiya is great for flat surfaces or through an airbrush. Okay. Uh, you'll find that I, I I find a way to put almost every paint I use in a in an airbrush. Most most of the time is to see if I can. Um, there are some paints that work really well with a little bit of flow improver, uh, and you know you, you mix it up, you, you get all your color right, and then you can literally just hit it with an airbrush. And there are some paints that do very poorly in an airbrush because a lot like Tamiya, you, it's you got to use it as it is, mm -hmm. and if it won't go through the brush, don't add flow improver. Yeah. I, I've had very poor, very very poor. Uh, results with Tamiya and Flow Improver. Hmm. Uh, you know if you use too much Flow Improver though is when you go to spray and the paint hits the surface but then it starts crinkling in like trying to f go to the center. Mm -hmm. uh, that means you've used too much Flow Improver, your paint is too wet and your surface just can't hold on right. to the paint. Um, but Tamiya also comes in a multitude of colors. Uh, traditionally, it's, you know, it's, you have white and then you have flat white. So you'll have a white which is glossy and shiny and then you'll have a flat white which is very matte. Uh, and for those new to the paint game, glosses are shiny, mattes tend to have more of a, a dull texture. I mean, you see like the color. Flat. Like yeah, it's matte is flat. Yeah, so the the differences are basically a matte paint will be duller in look, but not in color saturation. Right. Uh, it's like going into an office building and you see the walls have this semi gloss latex paint, but then you look up and you see like white ceiling tiles, but they they just look like white. Like it, there's really no there's anything no gloss to, it. to it. Yeah, there's no there's no shine. So that the tiles would be matte, the walls would be gloss. They shine. Ooh, shine. Or you know, one reflects color and light, the other one just reflects color. Yeah. Also very good. Very good. Point. Yeah. That, that was more succinct. Why didn't you just say that first? Well, you seemed like you were on a roll. Like I'm always on a roll though. Like I could talk. I, I have a nothing box. I could let me sit here and talk about nothing for five hours. Like, Stay on. tuned. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I'm the I'm of the mind that if it can go through an airbrush, it, it's it's good enough. And that's because I find that my airbrush is great for like even coverage. Mm -hmm. I don't like brush strokes, and I find that airbrushes can. Give me the, the coating I need with the least amount of you know brush work involved. Right. Uh, all of my details on all of my models, however, uh, do have brush work. I, the, you can't get away from it. Yeah. It's 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 a given. It's a constant. So knowing the brush skills, knowing the type of brush you need, is also very important. Um, then you have like Army Painter. Army Painter is kind of cool. It's a mix between. Like it's most of the consistencies I've found are a mix between uh, Citadel and Tamiya. And since you you've used Army Painter, I use Army you? Painter for um, my priming mm -hmm. mainly because it's cheap, um, or at least the compared to, comparatively to other companies, it's relatively cheap. Um, I'm still kind of determining whether or not I like it. Um, I've used like the Games Workshop Wraithbone spray was phenomenal. Oh, I love Wraithbone. Um, but I'm just kind of, I'm basically I'm in an experimental phase with different paints right now. Well, Citadel's claim for their primer, which is great primer by the way, mm -hmm. is it's the fastest drying primer yeah, it is. in the world. Like yeah, it has an average dry time of like 5-10 minutes. It's legit, yeah. It is good stuff. And it doesn't fumes quite so much. Now I'm not an expert on uh, like army painter paints. Are, are they just as varied in their colors as like Citadel and? Yeah, um, and they don't have. It seems to be like a more succinct uh, terminology for the different paints, like as opposed to Mephiston Red, where well I don't know what Mephiston is. I know what red is. It this will be like blood red, right? Um, 
And then, uh, so you're saying that the the naming schema is fairly succinct. All of is literally all of drab. Yeah. You know. Okay. And then, um, kind of related to that, you've got like Vallejo. Another good paint. Modern model color. Um, I like Vallejo. Like this is Vallejo's gunmetal gray, which would be let me see real quick because I think this is it's about the same as lead belcher. Yeah, I was gonna say this looks like this has a lot of lead belcher too. Yeah. Um, there's flat brown. Which would be like in Citadel would be that's they got like four different browns <laughs> like Katachan flesh yeah yeah you know? um, brass just instead of what type like Rune Lord brass just brass so yeah that and see thing is a lot of people I know like uh, Vallejo and Army Painter uh, paints because the color is just is just that it's just what it is you know they they don't try uh, to make some magical name and then you've got like. Uh, model color, which is kind of like an offshoot of Vallejo, um, that has the. It's. I use. So this is uh, Sky Blue, TIE Fighter Blue. TIE Fighter Blue? Yeah. Really? Yeah. TIE Fighters are, are, are like Battleship. I paint them off of the Micro Machines color scheme. <laughs> he paints them blue. <laughs> or... Ah, someone's going for the munchies. Or like Russian uniform. The only problem I find is that they kind of separate into their constituent colors a bit. So Russian uniform, does that just mean they're really, really fast or they're always out of time? Nice. I like them. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding, yeah, my um, Micro Reds in Russia. The other, just the other bonus to the Vallejo paints like this, they are cheap. So you can find what you like and kind of just try it out, and if you don't like it, well, okay, you're out like four bucks. Yeah, and uh, again, it, keep in mind, like, I use additives. I, I use additives, and I, I can't stress enough that, you know, just because the paint is matte to start doesn't mean that it has to be matte. You can add gloss medium you could add you know you, you can add like inks like metallic ink to it and turn it into a metallic version of that color there's always additives you can add to everything and increase you know the the different usabilities what is that just a, a metallic medium or is that yeah, a metal medium oh metal nice layer. yeah that's actually pretty cool oh this is acrylic resin that, that's nice. You got it from a company that shall not be named. Yes. <laughs> um, but you can, and keep in mind, if you're going to add, you know, ink color, if you're going to add any sort of, you know, color to the, the paint itself, make sure it's acrylic. Mm -hmm. You Don't use water-based anything. Use acrylic-based. Because the paint you're using is acrylic. And if you, you are using a watercolor, then you can use a water-based ink. But typically in the modeling world, we use acrylic inks because, well, they're just, you know, what's in mass. Mm -hmm. And it's not like we have, like, a laser, you know, coloring gun that we can just, you know, swipe over a model. Yeah, that'd be nice. No, because that would just take all the work out of it. Everybody could, you know... Isn't that literally the entire point of the show? Is that anybody could do it? Well, yeah, but there's a... <laughs> There's, I, I, I feel that there's a difference between teaching a skill and showing two guys who are just fumbling around doing it, just proving a point, versus having an instant going one and done. And stealing the machine to do it. Right. You know, it's just, it's, I, I don't know. I, I, I feel more like we're actually impressing upon everybody out there yeah. that, yes, there is skill involved. It is not a, an innate skill. It's something you can learn. If anybody can one and done and just squeeze a trigger and, oh, I've got my stuff, I mean, yeah, if, then everybody would that be able to sense, paint yeah. stuff, you know? And But this is also for people who want to paint. Okay. You know? And this is for people who, you know, like, oh, wow, those are cool. How'd they do that? And you and I are going to show this is yeah. what we did. This Fair is enough. how we did the thing. You know? And I think that's important. I think it's important to know that we've done this thing that we're we're showing people how to do this thing and build the community through like natural and learned talent 
just like in school. I mean, if, if you had a natural talent, it, it was kind of like, oh yeah, you're really good at this. Go, go do some more. And you're sitting there going, wait, I'm, I'm what? <laughs> yeah. I've never been told I was good at anything, really. Yeah, I went to Catholic school. Yeah. <laughs> there, was, there was no. So that's why your hands do this. Yeah. Gotcha. Gotcha. They nailed a dude to a plus sign. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was a lowercase t. Uh, it depends on which class you're in. I, I'm not. Anyway. I am not Roman <laughs> nor Catholic. Anywho, so paints. And yes, I use me. Uh. What are your favorite additives for paint? Like, if you had to add to uh, paint, like anything, what would it be? Like, I mean, if it to help you paint. It depends on the effect I'm going for. Um, the Lame Medium, if I'm doing like a flat surface with no, um, like, if I'm painting like what's supposed to be like sheet metal or stuff like that, Lame Medium, because it goes, it helps it go on super smooth. Um, if I'm doing say like a fur uh, I normally just use water really because I don't want it to have that oh you want to you know I don't want it to dry uniform well, I want it to dry like some dry a little bit some spots dry a little bit thinner some a little bit thicker because that's how fur works um, scales same deal um, yeah actually scales for me are uh, a whole nother story like I'll literally sit there. Like if I had like contrast paints are great for scales. Yeah. Because you just like literally just brush it on and you just let it dry. Yeah. Uh, another way I like to do scales is again airbrush. Mm -hmm. You you can literally airbrush on your your base color, mm -hmm. and then you find the color you need kind of hazed into the scale, and you can just okay. you flick up, and then you take your you know your shades. You know, hit the, all the little creases, and you still get that level of depth, but at the same time, you know, like the biggest tool that I, 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 I remember the look on your face, really, is uh, go buy a cheap hair dryer. Yeah. And, I, and it, it's not a joke, it is legit a, a, a cheap hair dryer. And lowest setting, just hold your model and just kind of go over it slowly you know, like side to side, rolling over the top, and then forward to back, rolling around, letting the the paint just kind of move. You know, the air move around, and it'll reduce your dry time, and it'll actually help even out. You know, the actual mm -hmm. surface drying, which is kind of cool. You know, a lot of people sit there and just like get a little dust fan and be like. That's what I do. You know, they they get the <laughs> oscillating fan. They forget that there's a little button that turns it off, and they're sitting there going. You know, I mean, I guess it's great for isometric air, you know, exercises, yeah. you know, going like that. But uh, a hair dryer, and hair dryers don't get hot enough to. Well, some of them do, but on the lowest setting, you rarely they they rarely ever get hot enough to, to hurt you. Mm -hmm. So uh, I use it on all the terrain. Like every time I do terrain, I'll literally really? sit back there and do what I got to do with the airbrush. Then you'll see me sitting there, just kind of just bored out of my skull. It's like God, I hate I hate the dry time. You know, it's like, but you're using a hair dryer. It takes like five minutes. I know, but still, <laughs> you know, Chris. Chris thinks it's funny because I'll I'll paint, and then I'll come out here and I'll, I'll like if I'm if I'm being lazy, and, or I need the paint to kind of settle a certain way where a, a, a dryer will not be helpful. Mm -hmm. I'll come out here and I'll be watching YouTube, and I'm, I'm just sitting there. I'm literally watching YouTube like I'm angry and bored. <laughs> like, like it's like. Sure, I'll watch this next thing. You know, right. Oh, well, look at my wrist. You know, uh, but yeah, uh, washes and shades. It, uh, a hair dryer, man. I'm, I'm telling you, a hair dryer. As a matter of fact, when we're done with this episode, I'll prove it to you. I, no, I believe you because I used to do makeup effects for cosplay, and yeah, hair dryers, and also uh, just running air through an airbrush. If you need to get it to glue fat, glue to dry fast. Yeah. Empty your paint out of your airbrush, and just tch, 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 and it. Or do what I do: get a really small nozzle and use cyanoacrylate, because that stuff bonds anything to anything. And they have this really cool stuff called Instaset, which comes in either a spray bottle. I actually have some right here. It's a it, this little clear liquid is literally Instaset. I can literally put a drop of this on one end, 
put my CA glue on the other and in it over. Like almost instantly set. It's like sovereign glue. Yeah. Hi, right, Bubba. Oh, you know, I gotta get up real quick. There's a little something I look like here that I'm new on to this game. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, That's right. another big thing when it comes to paints, and I don't know if you've noticed this, is. Uh oh, someone needs your lap, man. Come, yeah, on. come on, buddy. Let, let's dad this thing. No. Wait, no, he wants he wants to show me something. Well, go, um, go see. Yeah, it is. I can I can respond. But um, <laughs> go audio. <laughs> uh, when it comes to painting, I find that you know, like the paint itself. If you're not comfortable with the paint, mm -hmm. you're you're not going to be comfortable painting with it. Yeah. If you're not comfortable with your brushes, you're you're not going to be comfortable painting. Right. And I think that the big, one of the big things I can't, another thing that we can't stress enough is you don't have to be a master painter. You, you don't have to be overly competent to get really cool effects. You just have to know where to put your brush, where yeah. to put the color. And let, let's be honest. I mean, failure is failure. It's going to happen. But you need to, you need to fail to build up the level of confidence yeah. to just go in there and hammer things out. And... Just because you think it's a failure doesn't make it a failure. Oh no, somebody's be like, oh, I like the way you Van Gogh'd that thing. That's nice. I like or that. Or just like artists are our own worst critics. Um, yeah, don't. Sometimes the best thing you can do is to just step away and come back the next day. Yeah. And just look at it again with a fresh set of, with not tired and crossed eyes. Yes. Uh, another one of my favorite tools especially when working with uh, texture paints. Something you can get from Citadel, and I think a couple other places have it. And texture paints are basically just really thick, grainy uh, colors, but little spatula. Mm -hmm. Now these little spatulas are great because you can literally just reach into the pot, scoop out what you need, kind of put it on the, on the base. You know, you just literally put it on one of these you get, and you know I'm gonna do a demo because I'm in the mood. Yep, I did. I uh, did pick up a Citadel spatula. It's really great, easy to easy to clean. Um, so literally just open up the pot. But anything that you can get on there and use it, like if you can get it in the pot and then put it on a base, you can use it. And different. This is a little blob like that. Different pieces will give you different effects too when. You, oh yeah. When you scrape it and pull it off. And you just literally put it on like you're putting peanut butter on a piece of bread and you can just push it around just like that and the best part is is you can add swirls and curves and you can literally just slap this on and pull up and it'll give peak and valley mm -hmm. uh, so when you put your model on it, it it's not a consistent you know thing you know because earth itself like terrain is not consistent like if you go outside and you know go you know play at a park even the grass you're playing on isn't consistent in level so you can literally just do a little chop like this and voila let that dry and you've got this inconsistent earthy mound that you can you can add things to it like uh, blood for the blood god you could add so many other things. There's a, you can even dry brush it and give this, you know, Stryland. What is this? Stryland. Uh, yeah, Stryland Battle Miner. So it's supposed to look like mud that's been trod upon. Yeah. Um, another thing I like to do for basing when I do like really big basing is I'll take bits from the model kit I'm using mm -hmm. and put it. Then like literally just like cut Stick it up and make it look all debris, yeah. destroyed. And add it as for, to, for and yeah, exactly. Add it as debris. So, and here's another cool thing: is you, you don't have to get one of those. You can use, do the same thing with a like a, one of those weird plastic butter knives. Oh, I've used chopsticks. Oh, ex yeah, same here. It's like, <laughs> you know, you're literally going like this just to get the yep. very last bit out of it, you know? Because when you're spending seven, eight bucks on stuff, you, you want to get all. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, every last drop of the paint out of the pot. You want to get every last bit of the texture out of the pot. Um, there are some painters who are 
fans of actually taking, you know, stuff from a paint pot and putting it into proper bottles. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, I can't even see that. The lights in here are just horrible. Uh, they put them into little bottles like this that have little droppers. Basically turning a Games Workshop pot into one of these. Yeah. Uh, are you a fan of that or not? I haven't tried it yet. I've been thinking about it. Um, I've seen a lot of other people do it. Um, it definitely cuts down on spilling your Nolan oil. Who spills Nolan oil? Apparently everybody else on the internet. Oh, I'm not going to lie. That that was just a joke. Yeah. I've spilled so Same. much Nolan oil. Uh, There's just a constant black stain on my work desk. <laughs> it never actually dries. Oh, man. It, it, no, it no does. other paint. No other paint spills except yeah. for that one. Contrast paint spills. I, you know, I, I, I can More see expensive. doing... Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I think I might actually do that for contrast paints, but then again... You know, contrast paint. You, you tend want to, it to kind of blob out. Well, I'm, well, well that's what's blob. Actually, out. you know, you can actually take that bottle and take a brush and just kind of go boop, boop, and whoop, or drop directly yeah. on the model and just kind of. I do kind of prefer the um, Citadel paints pots because. Um, yeah, he gets, a, he gets a sip of that boy. He's going to no, get no, him to pick him up and eat water. Uh, paints clog. Um, yeah. The the dropper bottles clog really bad sometimes. I have been. Like almost done a model and just couldn't get that last drop that I needed out and gave it like one PSI too much pressure and just blasted and sprayed the whole model and the wall of my house oh. with uh, purple drab or brown violet or whatever the heck they call World War II tank color. World I, War II tank color? Yeah. No, it's in here. I got it. In no, here literally, that's what they called it World War II tank. Well, whatever uh, Vallejo calls their World War II tank color, let's say that. <laughs> See, uh, I think the worst I've done is, like, I'm I'm silly, and I don't wear rubber gloves when I airbrush. And so I have moments where I'll come <laughs> home. Kids. There's there's times where I'll come home, and I'll have an entire rainbow over my hands. You'll see, like, the primer because I'm holding everything and priming it like this. Uh, almost every single tool I have has primer or paint on it. <laughs> um, mostly because, like, I spray, and you know, when you go across, it's you know, you, you, you start, you go across, and then you let go. They do the same thing, like you would a, an actual, you know, rattle can. Right. At least that's how I do it, unless I'm literally just trying to airbrush in a very specific area. Um, so when I put my colors through it, you know, it's like, I'll have, like, like literally, I, she'll, she'll know if I'm working on something with a specific color set. Mm -hmm. And she'll go, oh, what'd you paint purple? <laughs> How'd you know I was using purple? It's all over your hand. Right. Um, also, every now and again, uh, I'll get, like, super enthusiastic with my paint. And it's like, oh, I gotta get all this done. And I'll sit there and I'll start painting and I don't realize that not only am I getting my hand, but I'm getting my paints. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or I'm getting the there. table, mm -hmm. or I'm getting an and like you said, you, you know, that one psi too much and everything. You know, I've actually inadvertently painted over a model while painting something for another. Oh, model. just in the crossfire. Yeah, it just or happened to be blaster. Yeah, thing. it just yeah. happened to be in in the in the cone of of paint. Mm -hmm. And so I'm sitting there going, Ch -ch 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 and I look. It, like there's, there's there's a xenomorph <laughs> with like the outline of a space marine in, in the front. No, it was um, and wily coyote toll. It was uh, it was a piece of terrain I was working on, and it was laying on its side because I had did an angle drip mm -hmm. for some uh, new oil gloss, so it kind of had this runny yeah. look. And as I'm painting, you can literally see where color here void, void color, and it was just like. If I made that black, it's a scorch mark. Yeah. <laughs> but it was purple, like not not dark purple, like bright purple. It was it was it was like Mardi Gras light. purple. <laughs> no, it, it was it was like I think I actually have the purple. I was. So that one. Was. 
It's it's like a lilac. Oh no! What's it, that it is this lilac that almost ruined an entire piece of terrain. Uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, with Citadel you get you have metallics too. Metallics tend to be thin, mm-hmm. but again, it, well, it depends on the metallic too. Yeah, because uh, Stormhose Silver and Runefang Steel are two very different consistencies. Uh, dude, Runefang Steel is weird. Yeah, I have yet to get it to work right. Like, I don't even know if that's an actual paint. Like, <laughs> it's just it, it looks like clear, me- m- like metallic. I f- I think it kind of acts like the metallic medium, like adds the metallic sheen to it, but doesn't actually like, add any color. Right. That's the only because I've like shook it. For a solid ten minutes, oh, trying I'm, to get it to incorporate right, and then I dip my brush in, and it comes out clear. I'm like, it's silver gray in the pot. Dip it, it's clear. I don't understand. I did one this better. Is weird science. I don't know. I literally, I can literally one up you with this because I got so angry with this stuff. I have an, I have a battery of pow- like a powered, you know, mm-hmm. oscillating saw, a saw. Mm-hmm. Well, there's a, I found a 3D print. That had a holder for a nice. paint pot that you can put into the oscillating saw. I got my saws all in my truck. Actually. And literally, <laughs> I'm sitting there with this paint. Just <laughs> I'm just sitting there waiting. I'm I'm gonna burn this battery out. Right. Okay. And I'm going. I and I literally timed it. I went for like four and a half minutes mm-hmm. on the highest possible setting. Mm-hmm. And mind you, this only has one setting. Right. Cut stuff. Yeah. Okay. And I'm just going nuts. To the point where the thing actually broke. Okay, this wobbling around like like literally, I can't hold it because my hand just starts flying off. You can't really aim it against anything because it'll just shatter because right. it's PLA. And I shook Stormhost Silver until like if it was going to incorporate, it would have. Take it out, still clear. Mm-hmm. It's horrible. I don't like it. But now that you say it that way, I can see it as an actual additive piece. And I'm going to have to try it in a different way. I think I'm going to have to grab some and actually yeah, test like the theory when we end Drop this. some paint onto a plate and then maybe add some into that until we just see what happens. I mean, if that's the case, it's kind of a, it's kind of a really bad version because you don't need my batteries. Well, I mean, I thought it was going to get extra juice. <laughs> Someone needs a nap. Yeah, he does. Um, now, keep in mind, uh, another thing to keep in mind is, you know, it's not just a matter of, for me, it, uh, when I paint, it's not just a matter of knowing my colors and knowing where I need to put things. It's also having a really good idea of what I'm going for. Mm-hmm. Like, literally having an image in my head of what I'm trying to do. Yeah. Uh, having that mental image is... I'm not going to say having the mental image of what you're trying to do is going to be one of the greatest things in sliced bread and it's going to elevate your painting to the nth degree, but I will say having a very firm idea of what color is going to be where mm-hmm. is going to not only allow you to paint faster, but it gives you an idea of where you're going to need to stop painting and let paint dry yep. so you can add your next color or little ways you can get around, you know, doing all the pieces. Like right now I have a, I mean, I did this guy and he's a Harlequin and I did him for fun just because I could, you know, got a little bit of bass there, got, you know, kind of got the Harley Quinn thing going. Um, and I have another one that I'm, I'm building up and, you know, being a Harlequin, I, I figured they would be all different colors. So, you know, I've got, you know, kind of a black and purple thing going with this one, more solid colors. I, I, it's the fact that I know where the colors are going to go that I think is actually helping me in this process. And it'll help you in the long run, too, because if you have everything in your head where it's going to go, I mean, even if you write it down, you know, coat black face mask white with these colors you know it, it at some point you're going to stop needing paper 
mm-hmm. you're, you're going to stop needing to write it down because you'll be like, all right, you're going to sit down, you're going to see your model, you're going to see what you're what you're going to want to do, you're going to see how you're going to do it, and then you're just going to instinctively just go do it. Anything you got? Anything you want to add? Since to that, um, yeah, we're gonna need to wrap up today because yeah, our executive producer really needs a nap. Um, yeah, having that vision and knowing what you're going for is huge. Yeah, and if you have a reference point that you can, doesn't even need to be like, oh, I want to paint this space marine to look like that guy. Yeah, but. If you have a reference point for that color scheme, so you know how the blending kind of goes, that's huge. Um, I'll show you on the Facebook page in the show notes my Walmart challenge, and also what I based it on. Do you remember the uh, 1993 T-Rex toy from Jurassic Park? Yes. That's what it was... Really? Yeah, that was what the nice. color scheme was. I didn't get it quite as good as I want, wanted it to. Because well, we only used three colors of tint and shade. Yeah. <laughs> All right. And that, there's something to that. When you use three colors of tint and shade, you're supposed to be able to make everything, but sometimes your paints don't always work out. Yeah. Like, you know, I, I got a decent blue-green, This that, that nice little deep teal. Mm-hmm. You know, I got that olive, you know, which took a little bit of rejiggering. Yeah. So, you like I said, you don't need expensive paints, but when you do start scaling into paints itself, you know, find the ones that are going to work for you. Mm-hmm. Find the ones that are going to work within your price range. Find the ones that are going to give you the coverage you want that, you know, at, at start, you don't have to go buy matte medium or flow improver or gloss medium. It gives, it's going to give you the colors, the, the temperatures you want, and just start painting. Enjoy yourself. Yeah. And like, I've seen people do amazing things with Walmart paints. Oh yeah. Um, I'll, one of my friends did a troll from Nalzer's Miniatures, and it looks like the WizKids painted troll, like out of the box, like almost note for note. That's like disgusting. Yeah. See, one thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna see what these Walmart paints can do with additives. Great, and that was also not just red, yellow, and blue. She has, like, a range of different Walmart colors, which, you know, a bottle is 50 cents, so you can get a whole range of colors and do a lot more of a specific gradient of your paint colors than just what we had with the three the three basics. Yeah, and you can go online and get a color wheel to let you know how to get a specific mm-hmm. color, too. And also knowing how the different colors interplay, like, um, certain Blues colors will greens. clash, but they'll also make the opposite color pop. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, that, that that is absolute truth. That's uh. So when I work, I used to work at a uh, theme park in Orlando, um, that is managed by a mouse, and the reason that they chose the colors that they did in the central courtyard, mm-hmm. red brick with a uh, lawn, is that both colors seem more vibrant against. The other color, yeah. I mean, there's something to say about. I mean, that mouse man, he knows more about human nature than we do. Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> uh, that's the episode for today. Yep. Uh, Chris is gonna go home and do the the notes. I'm gonna, you know, cycle through and get this stuff on YouTube. Uh, like I said, hit us up on Facebook. Absolutely. Let us know what. Uh, just look up the paint nerds. It, yep. It's really not difficult. Uh, I'm gonna go once this is up. I'm gonna go about putting it on. I'm gonna throw it to social media. Well, you could do it. You just go on YouTube and find it. Yeah. Do what I did. Go on YouTube and find our channel and, and like it and subscribe and. Will do. You know, you, you can just take the little header and say, "Hey, go here." Uh, I'll do the same thing in Discord. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, and if you're wanting to listen to a uh, a stream about a visual medium. We are now on Spotify, Google Podcasts, and also Breaker. Yep. So check us out. So you can actually listen to us on the drive, you know, just have a laugh at some of the silliness that goes on here. Mm-hmm. So once again, thank you to the Save Point and a uh, shout out to Trolltooth Productions. Uh, they actually helped us with the camera and some software to get us started here. Uh, 
Justin and Jennifer have been just amazing human beings uh, throughout the whole thing. They've actually really inspired me to, to do this, and it, they really pushed me to ask Chris to join in. And I, I think they made a great pairing with us. Oh yeah, and we want to we appreciate you guys. Absolutely, Troll Tooth Productions. Thank you to the Save Point in Marrero. Uh, for allowing us to use your beautiful store and uh, use your internet and basically sit here and talk about paints and life in general and anybody you want to shout out? Um, I'm Rod Bigma. Man, you're gonna have to start writing stuff. Down. I really need to. Yeah, I need to like. Well, he naps <laughs> during the the thing, so I don't really have a chance to do it. Yeah. Um, you can check me out at, at 504 Minis on Facebook, um, at the Paint Nerds on Facebook for the uh, for this show. Um, yeah, drop me a line. We'll do, we're both commission artists. We'd love to talk to you about your paint, paintings, uh, painting your minis. Um, no obligation, just... Yeah, you, you don't have to pay us to, to get information. Yeah, More if than you say, hey, I'm painting this. What should I paint it? How should I paint it? Um, We'll be more than happy to point you in the right direction. Yeah. So thanks again, everybody. You guys have a great day and enjoy painting.